Hi, I'm Jackson Crawford. I'm an Old Norse specialist, previously teaching at several universities, now making a go of presenting about Norse language, myth, sagas, runes, etc. on YouTube for anyone interested to see. I'm supported by a wonderful community of Patreon backers who have frequently requested that I continue these videos in which I do deep dives into the Old Norse text of the poems of the Poetic Edda with an explanation of their English translation. So today, the poem from the Poetic Edda that I'll be reading is called For Skirnes, Journey of Skirnir, or Skirnes Mol, Words of Skirnir. And I think I can probably do uh, the whole thing in one video, and usually for such a relatively long poem. All right, well, let's go. Unlike most of the poems of the Poetic Edda, which are just found in the Codex Regius or Konungsbok manuscript, Forskirnes is found in two, or it's mostly found in two. So the entire thing, given the title For Skirnes, Skirnes Journey, is in the Konungsbok or, or Codex Regius, the main manuscript of the Poetic Edda, the only source for poems like Halvamal, for example. It is also found up to a point in stanza 27 in the other main manuscript of the Eddic poems, AM 748 1 Quarto, which is the only source for, say, Baldur's Drama or Baldur's Dreams, and also has the text of some other uh, Eddic poems, like most of Forskirnes. And so it's in AM 748 1 Quarto that is called Skirnes Mole, Words of Skirner or For Skirner or About Skirner. Because that mole title is more common in the poems of the Portugueta, Halva Mall, Vavthrudnes Mall, Grimnes Mall, etc., most people use that. However, I am such a favoritist about the Codex Regius manuscript that I prefer its title there for Skirnes. So you can call it what you want. Now, like many poems in the Poetic Edda, this is preceded by a prose uh, intro. Now that prose intro, we need to remember, is not necessarily of the same age as the poem. The poem could be centuries older than this prose context. And it's worth noting that it is the prose that says that it's Skadi who speaks the first stanza, in which a parent or step-parent uh, calls Freuer Okarn Mog, our son. Since Skadi is not his biological mother, uh, people have been confused about this, but it's entirely possible that, like Snorri says when he encapsulates this poem, when he's, he's talking about Freuer and Gilvigidding in the prose edda, that it's actually Njordr who asked the first uh, question, who's, who's the speaker in the first stanza originally. It's hard to say. All right, so the prose intro says, Froer, sonr njardar, have the ein dag setsk i hlid skjolv och så um hema alla. Han så i jotun hema och så thar möj thagra, tho er hon gek frå skola fodr sins til skemo. Thar av fek han hugsotir miklar. Skirnir, Het skosvein froes. Njordr bad han kvedja froe mols. Tho melti skadi. So Froer, the son of Njord, Njord, had sat one day in Hlidskjot, and that's Odin's throne, where Odin surveys all the different realms. And he saw around all of the realms. Uh, I prefer that term to worlds because we have to remember this isn't a planetary conception. The realms, Oscar, the Midgard, the Jotunheimer, etc., are on one quote unquote planet. He looked into Jotunheimar. Notice this is plural, the realms of the Jotnar, the enemies of the gods, often called the giants, although I don't like the term because it makes it sound like they're bigger or look different from the gods. So he looks into their realms, and there he saw a beautiful girl, Moy, unmarried woman. When she walked from the hall of her father to her detached house, her schema, People often use bower for this, but since, uh, you know, that's such an archaic word in English, I, I prefer to say, you know, her little detached house, something like that. Her bungalow, if you want. Thereof, thought of, he got Hanfek great spiritual sicknesses, Hugsotir. So he's sick in mind, sick in heart, sick in spirit, right? He's, he's longing for her and he's sick with it. 
Skirner was the name of Freuer's Skosvein. A Skosvein literally be shoe boy. This is not a title of the Viking Age. It is, as you can maybe guess, a pretty chivalric uh, age type title, giving us the impression that this prose and true again might have been written as late as the 1200s when the manuscript was written down. Um, but at any rate, you know, he's his servant of some kind. Norther asked him to request speech from Freuer, and then Scavi said, and now we get into the actual poem, which again, remember, the poem itself doesn't say who's the speaker in the first stanza, so it could have initially been intended to be Norther just as well as Scavi. Ristu nu, Skirnir, och gak at beida okar mola mog, och thes at fregna, huim in frodi se ovre di avi. Rise now, Skirnir, and go to ask our son for speech, Gakat Beda Okar Mog Mola. And to learn this, Okfregnathes, with who, with whom, if you insist, Huem, the wise grandfather in Frothi Avi may be, say, subjunctive form of the verb vera, over angry Olvredi. I said, okay, so go ask who this wise quote unquote grandfather is mad at. Now, the fact that he's called a grandfather, Avi, doesn't necessarily mean that Freud is a grandfather, although we might well be um, words like this that just mean, you know, a man of some kind, any kind, can be used in poetry to just mean man. So we could just say, who the wise man is mad at. Skinner said, sends it to, Ilra urda er mer on at ukrum sunni, evek gang at malavit mog, ok thesat fregna huem in frodi se ovre di Avi. There is hope or expectation er own. Now this is typically von. Uh, this is consistent with sound changes that go on in Old Norse for von to become own, uh, but usually by the 1200s it's been re-regularized to, to von. So this may be copied into the Codex Regis manuscript from a source um, that was in a, a little bit non-standard or, or, or peculiarly markedly archaic uh, form of, of Old Assigning. So there is expectation for me, owner mere, i.e. I expect, bad words, ilra orda, from your son, at ikrum sini, if I go to speak with the son, evet gang at malamid mog, and then, and again, to learn who the wise man is angry at. And he says again, in stanza three, uh, now he's talking to Freuer, segdu that Freuer, folk valdi goda, ok ek vilja vita, hui thu ein sitter en langa sali, min drotin um daga. So say it, Freuer, you army chosen one of the gods, so like you war leader of the gods, Folkvaldi. And I want to know, okay, why you sit, hui thu sit, alone, ain, around long halls, and langasali. So we kind of get this impression that Freuer, like a dejected high school suitor, is sitting around in the cafeteria, you know, it's a place for big crowds, but he's alone in there, you know, moping. My lord, Mindrotan through the days, umdaga. Freuer responds, and I always have to kind of read him as a 14-year-old kid, you know, dejected about his first crush. Hui um segiak ther segerin ungi, mikin mo trega, fiat olvrol the lyserum a la daga ok thurgi at minum monum. Why say I that to you? Notice K uh, is the pronoun ek, I, suffixed here to the subjunctive segya, uh, what I say. So why would I say to you, young man, segar ungi, the, the great spirit sorrow, mikin mothrega? Because Ulf Rodel, the elf reddener, <laughs> this is the son, um, notice this is a little bit more kinning heavy than other Eddic poems we've looked at. So because the son, the elf reddener, lights through all the days, Lisa um Aladaga, and though not, Okthoigi, at my fulfillments, at mina munum. So it shines through all the days, but it doesn't shine on my my wishes getting fulfilled. Skinner said, Sense of five, Munithina hikka ek swal miklavera at thu mer seger ne segir. Thviat ungir saman borum i ordaga, vel metim tver truask. So, I don't think ek hig a, so here we have suffix ek, i, and also the negative suffix a. I don't think your desires, your longings, munithina, to be so big, vera swomikla, that you, at thu, cannot say ne segir to me, mer, man, segir, <laughs> because 
we were, vorum, uh, the word we is assumed here because of the form of the verb, we were young together, ungir saman, in early days, the ordage. Well, to, to tver, might, matim, well, fell, trust one another, through us. Through us being believe, trust, have faith in, and then sk, the reciprocal suffix making it trust one another. For I said, sans a six, igumis gorthum, exor ganga mer tita moi. Armar listu and I've thought on alt loft ok logger. And I noticed I went back to my default of the most reading voice and I forgot to do the whiny teenager thing. Anyway, I saw ex saw walking ganga a girl moi dear to me tita mer in the yards of Gimir, so in the enclosed area around Gimir's house. Her arms, Armar, lit up, listu. It's the loudest nut hashes in Colorado. Ah, uh, and from there, and I've thought on all the sky and sea. So her arms glowing, they're so bright, she's so beautiful, and she also lights up the sky and sea. This is a huge trope in Norse literature. Women who are beautiful, and occasionally men who are beautiful, like Balder, who's really, you know, notably, quote, beautiful, uh, are actually literally luminous. They light things up. He continues, Mer er mer tidari in mani huem ungum i ordaga, osa ok olva thatvil engi madar at vid samt sem. The girl Mer is dearer to me, er tidari mer, than to any man, mani huem, any young man, huem ungum mani, in early days, the Ordaga. So, you know, again, he's a petulant teenager. You know, she matters more to me than any girl's ever meant to anybody. You wouldn't understand, Dad. Among the gods and elves, also Alva, no man, Engi, mother, wants, feel that we be together. Thought at vit sem samt. Notice, mother, person, is used for any sentient being, and really of any sex, unless it's, it's, it's context makes it clear that it's a man of any kind. So there are men among the elves and gods, right? So gods get called man all the time, mother or seger, right? Depending on what we need for poetic alliteration. Skinner responds, sense eight, Mar gebthu mer tho than er mik um mjökravan beri, visan vapurloga, og thatsferd er sjoft vegisk vid jotna at. Give me then the horse, gebthu mer tho mar, the one which Than Er may bear me, bury Mik, through the certain dark flickering flame, Mirkvan Visan Vavarloga. So give me this particular horse that seems to be capable of carrying me through this fiery barrier, apparently, between the uh, enclosure of the Asir gods, Olskarther, and of the, the worlds of the, the Jotnar, Jotnahemar. And that sword, Okthat's fair, which fights by itself at Regis Sjolft against the family of Jotnar, the anti deities, so called giants. For our response, his last words for a little while, Sansa 9, Marek ther than gev er thick um mirkvan ber visan vavrloga. Okthat's fair er sjolft mun vegask, ef so er horsker er heavy. So, I give you, ek gev ther. That horse, Than Mar, which bears you er bear thick through the certain dark flickering flame, um, visan mirkvan varvar loga, and the sword which will fight by itself, er moon vega sjolft, if that one, if so er horsker er heavier, if that man is wise who bears it. So apparently, you may need some kind of special magic to use this awesome self fighting sword. Skirner Malti with Heston, this is in prose. Skirner said to the horse, Sansa ten, Mirkt er uti mol kvetek okor fara urig fjol uver, thorsa thiod uver, bo der vit komunk et the okor bo the tekker so in oa motki jotun. It is dark outside, Mirkt uti, I say ekved, it is a goal, mol, mol has many meanings, one of them is goal, for us okor to fare to go, fara. Over the wet mountains, Uvir Urig Fjol, so some damp mountain range may separate parts of Olskar from Jotunheimar. Over the people of the 
Antigods, the Thursar, the Jotnar. We both may come, vit boulder komum, he's talking him and the horse, or the mighty Jotun will take us both. Eda soen olmatki Jotun teker oker boulder. So he's telling the horse, you know, <laughs> I'm with you, man, right? If the, the giant kills me, he's going to kill us both. Now we got some more pros. Skirnir Ray, the Jotun Hema til Gimis Garda. Thar Voru Hundar Omir Bunir Fir Skidgars Livi Thesar Umsal Gerdar Var. Han Ray, that thar er fehir der sat o Hogi o Kvadi Han. Skinner rode into Jotun Hamar to the enclosures of Gimir. There were wild dogs and they were bound before the uh, the gate in the like picket fence almost a skeeth is a flat bit of wood so a skeeth garther is an enclosure of fence made of such flat bits of wood kind of like a picket fence um by the way that word skeeth a flat bit of wood is of course the origin of english ski anyway uh the one where the where gareth's hall saw was he rode to where hanre that thar air a uh, cattle herder, fey herder, cowboy, I guess you could say, sat on a mound and said to him, uh, Skinner said to him, Sands 11, Sek thou thought herder, er thu o heugi sitar og vardar alla vega, hue ak at anspildi komum ins unga mans hur groyum gymis. Say it, herder, cowboy, partner, when you sit on the mound, er thu sitar o heugi, people always sitting on mounds, by the way, in these poems, and guard all the ways, how I may come komunk to conversation at unspili of the young girl in Ungamats uh, for the the dogs of Gimir. So, like, presumably the meaning of this preposition for here is something like in spite of, right? Despite through the dogs of Gimir. Notice also man with one n that means girl, right? So that so. Uh, one thing you always got to watch for if you're reading this kind of archaic Old Norse poetry is M-A-N-N-S would mean man's, person's. M-A-N-S specifically means girls. Uh, so the, the herder said, Sansa 12, Hort ertu feger et ertu fram gengen. Anspilis vanner thuskalt avera godrar moyar gymis. So are you fey, meaning are you doomed to die? And notice this hort, whether, often precedes questions in Old Norse. Just to fill in kind of some metrical space, um, you wouldn't translate it in English. You would just start out straight with, are you, are you fated? Or are you already dead or to from gang and have you gone forward into death? And then we're probably missing a line uh, based on the view of the halter meter here. Anyway, you shall always be, Thuskalt Vera A, lacking Vonner conversation, Anspilis, with the good girl of Gimir, Gothra Moyer, Gimis. And then Skirner says probably the most famous, or really ought to be the most famous, stanza in 13, in uh, Skirn, for Skirner's stanza 13. Kostir ru betri helder enat klokva se, huim er hus er fara. Enu degri mer var alder um skapadar, ok alt liv um lagit. Now, choices are better, there are better choices, kostir ru betri than Hilder N that one might weep. So the se there is really metrical filler. We see that in Hovamal 2. For the one Huame who er is er er uh, ready eager to go. So we got two heirs, one is a who or which and one is an is. On one day, Enu Dugri, for me, Mare was a Lifetime shaped alder scapather and all life alt leave made lay down lug it. So there's always better choices than to weep, right? Than to kind of give up and cry for the one who's eager to go to do. Right? So if you're if you're willing to take action, there's always a better choice than just it's you know weeping. One on one day, my entire lifetime was shaped and all my life was laid down. This is a critical part, of course, of the Norse belief in the one day that one is fated to die no matter what, so you might as well die in a brave way in battle or doing some other, uh, you know, good undertaking where at least a good reputation will survive you and you might potentially join Odin in Valhol rather than the boring realm of hell. 
All right, now Gareth speaks for the first time, stanza 14. Hwat arthat hlum hlimja erek huiri nu til osum ronum i, jorth bivask en allir hurir skjolva gardar gumis. What is that noise of noises, hlim hlimja, which I now hear huiri til in our houses, i osum ronum. Osum is a pretty archaic form of our, so again, we've got some pretty archaic vocabulary here. The, or, the earth sh- the, or, the earth shakes, the earth bivask, and all the yards, the enclosures, uh, shake, skelva, uh, before, or everything, all ear shakes, skelva, before the, the enclosures gather of, of Gimir. No, the other and gather, we still together, so all the enclosures of gather, of Gimir, shake before whoever this one is. A serving woman said in Sansa 15, Mother e her uti stiganaf marspaki yo latir til yardar taka. A man is outside here. He has stepped off of a horse's back, marspaki. He lets latir, uh, the horse, take to the earth. Latir yo taka til yardar. Notice all these poetic words for horses. Just ch- choosing the one that matches alliteration, right? Mars with mother, yo with yardar. Here the sentence sends 16 in bithu han ganga i okarn sal of draka in mara mjod tho a kit oom at her uti se min brother bani bid him to go in bid thu han ganga in into our sal into our hall i okarn sal and drink the fine mead of draka in mara mjod though i fear it though ek oom kit that outside here is at her se uti min brother bani my brother's killer. Of course, who her brother was is not known. Uh, whether Skirner might have killed her brother or not, we can't say, or whether she thinks it's somebody else because we don't know who her brother is or what story this refers to. 17, she continues, Hwaterthat olva ne osasona ne visavana, hui thu ein umkomt eikin fur uvir or salkini at sio. Here we have another archaic form of our or. What is that of the elves, or of the gods' sons, or of the wise Vanir? So, you know, which one is this from the elves, or from the Asir, or from the Vanir gods? Why do you come, we comp through alone, ain over the wild fire, if you're aching for? By the way, that four word is our word fire, is one of the rare places in poetry only, where you'll see the English, the word that becomes English fire in, in Old Norse, because usually Old Norse uses elder. To see our homes at Sio or Salkini. Skinner responds in 18, Emkat ek olva ne osa sona ne vi savana, tho ek ein um konk eken fur uvir uvir Salkini at Sio. I am not of the elves, so ek em at, <laughs> right, we've got the I and the negative suffix suffix to the verb, am, am. I am not of the elves, nor of the Asir sons, nor of the wise Vanir. Though I come alone, though I comp ain over the wild fire to see your halls. Now he starts trying to woo her. He says in 19, Epli elivu her heavy ek al gulin thou munek ther ger the geva, fridat keupa, a thu ther froi kvedir, o levastan liva. All right. I have a heavy here, here, eleven all golden apples, edlibu al gulen epli, which I will give you, Gerther, thou ek mun geva ther Gerther. To buy love at kaupa frith. Frither is peace in standard prose, 1200s Old Norse, but in early poetry, it often does mean love, as it does sometimes in Hovma. That you speak or promise a thuk feather froy yourself the froyer there froy un okay ah, that you promise a thuk feather yourself there to live live a and then we have to kind of assume like a with here unloathsomest froyer oh Levastan froyer so i'll give you these 11 all golden apples to promise your love to froyer who's so unloathsome now, numerous people down the centuries have wondered why 11 apples, right, a week's worth of snacks, would be worth this, you know, gorgeous woman pledging herself to a man she may not want to marry. Well, there's an excellent idea um, 
that started actually a long time ago with Sven Grundtvig, that Elivu here is actually an error that the scribe made in transcribing a much more obscure word, Eliliv, which means old age medicine. Now, when Snorri talks about Idun's apples that keep the gods from aging, in Skoldskopramal in the prose that he calls them Eplin Eliliv Osana, the old age medicine apples of the gods. Notice that Eplin Eliliv is basically, you know, it's extremely parallel with this Epli Elivu right here. I think that's a great explanation that what he's actually offering her is eternal life and youth, right? Not a, not a week's worth of snacks. Um, and that the scribe just couldn't get his head around what the Eliliv was and transcribed it by the more common word Elivu. Or maybe he was just bored while he was copying this and just wrote the word that seemed to make more sense to him. So in 20, she replies, Epli elivu ek theg aldregi at manskis munum, ne vit froer met an okart fjor livir bigum badi saman. So I never receive ek aldregi thig eleven apples elivu epli for, man's, for no man's love at manskis munum. Nor we too, me and froer, vit froer, while our life lives, met an okart fjor liver, uh, live both together. So. I'm never going to accept 11 apples, or even possibly she's refusing the old age apples, um, for a man's love, no man's love. And she says that no matter how long we live, Freud and I won't live together. So Skinner says in 21, Berg ek thertho give than er brender var med ungum oden suni, otta eru javn hovgir, er av drupa en a niundu hueria not. I give you then ek give their thaw a ring, baug, which was burned at Brindervar with the young son of Odin, with Ungum Sini Odin. So um, Snorri says that at Baldur's funeral, Odin put his ring Draupnir down um, on the pyre with his son Baldur. There are eight Eru Otta, just as heavy, Yavan Hovgir is in just as valuable, right, because it's made of precious metal, which drop off Er Drupa of the every ninth night in a where you need to note. Okay, so now he's offered her potentially the apples that would keep her alive and young forever, and now this ring that just generates more wealth. Um, I invite you to wonder, if Freuer says that none of the gods would ever approve of them being together, where did Skirner get Odin's apples and Odin's ring that he burned with Baldur? Right, <laughs> you know, are we missing a uh, little prequel to this where Skinner steals all this stuff. Uh, who knows? Anyway, this is about halfway. Let me pause right here for a quick word from my generous, long-suffering sponsors. All right, so in 22, Gerther refuses this, just like she refused the apples. Beug ek thig kak thot brender se medungum oden suni. Era mer guls vant i gordum gumis at de la fee folder. I do not receive ek thig kak. So here we have receive, thig, and then k for i is suffix twice, and then the negative suffix a ah between the two k's. So I don't receive thig kak. The ring. Though it be burned, thot se brender with the young son of Odin, Medungum sini Odins. There is no lack of gold, era vant guls, for me in the the enclosures of Gimir to share the money of my father, at de la fe, father. Now Skinner turns to threats, and of course this does get dark, as you probably know if you've read the, the uh, Porchetta. So he says in 23, Ser thu thenamaki nar, myovan molfon, erek heva, erek heavy hendi, here, here. Hovath hogva ek mun ther halsi ov, nemathu mer sat seger. Do you see, ser thu, this sword girl, thenamaki mar? Soft, strange description for sword, word painted molfon, so maybe it has runes on it, which I have here in my hand, erek heavy heri hendi. I will chop Ekmun Hogva, the head, your head, hovut there, because we use the dative to show possession of body parts, hovut there, off the neck, Holsi, unless you say to me, 
a concession. Nema thu seger mer sats. Unless you accede to what I'm, I'm threatening you with. Okay, this says in 24. O now thola ekvil aldregi at manskis munum. Thoak hinsget evit gumir finisk viks otraudir at ukker vegativi. I want never, I, I never want ek aldregi vil to endure thola oppression, duress, compulsion, all now for a man's love, at Mansis Munum. Though I guess, though I get hints, if you and Gimir, if it Gimir, y'all two, including Gimir, find one another, finis, you men unreluctant to fight, o rather viks, that it may happen to you, at TV, that you kill one another, at TV Ikir Vega. Skinner responds again, uh, repeating uh, part of 23. Serthu thanamaki mer myovan molfon erak hevi i hendi her. Fyr thesum eggium hnigr so in almi jotun verder thin feger father. Do you see this sword, girl? Soft, word painted, which I have in my hand. The aged jotun, your father, kneels before these edges. Hnigr fyr thesum eggium. Your father, thin father, becomes doomed to their fager, so he's going to die, he's going to be killed. He says further, 26, Tams fendi ek thik drep en ek thik temiamun mer ak minumunum. Thar skal tu ganga er thik gumna sunir sitan ava se. I kill you with a taming wand ek drep thik tams fendi. Now, drepa typically does mean kill in 1200s Old Norse. It can earlier on just mean strike, but he's definitely threatening her violently. And I will tame you, enek mun temyethik, girl, to my desires, mad atminum munum. You shall go, skaltu ganga, there where thar er, the sons of men, i.e. people in general, never again see you, uh, se thik ava sidan. He says further, 27, Ara thuvu o skaltu or sitja horva hemi or snuga heljar til matar se ther meir leidar en mana huem in froni ormer med firum. You shall sit skaltu sitja immediately or on an eagle's nest or ara thuvu. Turn away from the world, from presumably where people that you might like live, horva or hemi. Gaze toward hell, snuga til heljar. Food will be more hateful to you, matter se mer leder there, than the shining serpent and in Frommi Ormer. Perhaps he means specifically uh, Jormungandr, the world serpent, or perhaps he means, you know, just snakes in general. Uh, are to each man among men. So in, in Frommi Ormer, we can kind of assume a verb like air, is to each man, fwame, among men, mana, among men, metvir. 28, he continues, At under sionum thu verder er thu ut kumer, othik hrimnir hari, othik hotvet nastari, vid kunari thu verder en vorder met godum, gapi thu grindum fro. You become thu verder, you will become. Present is often used for future. A laughing stock, at under sionum. When you come outside, erthu kamer ut. Hrimnir, this is a name for some Jotun. Um, Hrim is often used in the names of particularly ugly Jotnar, by the way. Um, so, you know, there's beautiful and ugly giants, Jotnar, anti gods. Um, Gerther's obviously one of the beautiful ones, but there are ugly ones. So, Hrim is off, often comes off in the names of the sort of ugly, undesirable ones. So, Hrimnir will stare at you, Haryal Thick. Everyone will stare at you, Hotvet and Astariel Thick. You will become, through Verther, more widely known, Vith Kunari, than the guardian among the gods, and Vorther met Gotham. You will gape, this could either mean keep her mouth open or her eyes open, from the gates, Fro Grindum. Now it continues 29, because some very rare words, these first four uh, words of an ok and, um, I'll give you some potential meanings based on their etymologies, but they could also just be sort of meant as somewhat generic curse words, you know, your abracadabra type words. Topi ok opi tjossel ok otholi vaxi ther tor metrega. Sets tu nidar en ek mun segja ther svoran susbreka 
och tvänan träga. Fool and scream causer, chaos maker and unendurable desire. May tears grow for you, tor vaxithir, with sorrow. Sit down, said to neither, and I will tell you, and ek mun sekithir, a heavy sorrow of Ruswaran sus breka, and doubled sorrow of Tvenan Trega. He continues, 30. Tramar gnoipa thick skulu gerstan dag, jotna gordum i, till hrim thorsa hallar thuskat werian dag, kranga costa leus, kranga costa von, grot at gamni skaltui gorgen hava ok leva metorum trega. Ha, huh, so, kind of evil beings. This could be other Jotnar, especially ugly ones, or it could be lesser evil beings. But Tramar, something evil. They'll be bending you over, Gnoipa thick, on a bad day, Gerstan Dag, in the halls, or in the enclosures of the Jotnar. So you're going to stay in Jotunheimar, and you're going to be subject to some really nasty beings. Notice, you know, if you're if, if you're a member of a group, maybe that's that's got... A bad reputation it might still be considered bad to threaten you to stay with those people right it's almost like the Jotnar kind of acknowledge that they're lower in status than the gods and then of course we have Hrim Thorsa so Thors much more negative word for Jotun than the word Jotun and then Hrim is this really negative word for them you know people translate Hrim Thorsa as frost giants you could just as well just call it like the ugly or the extra bad giants but to the hall of them you will every day Thuskaltwerian dog, like totter, like she's not even walking steadily. Kranga, without choices, Laus Costa, lacking choices, Bon Costa. Weeping for joy, Grot at Gamni, you shall have instead, Skaltu Hava i Gogen, and you will endure sorrow with tears, Okleva Traga Metorum. He's still not done, 31, myth. Thursi three hovdudum, thuskalt a nara, et averlaus vera. Thit ged gripi, thick morn morni, ver thu sem thistil, so er var trungen i on ovan verda. You shall always spend time, thuskalt nara a, with a three headed thors, a three headed giant. Or be manless, et vera verlaus. Your mind. Uh, may grip, or he may grip your mind. There may be something wrong with this line. Uh, sorrow will sorrow you more and more thick. Uh, you, you will be, or well, be you, he's giving a command here. Verthu, like a thistle, some thistle, which was trampled, so I have thrungen, in the last half of the work, on ovan verda. So, you'll be like a trampled flower. 32, till holtz a gek, och til hross, Vidar, gambantain at getta, gambantain at gat. I walk to a forest at Gektel Holtz and to a raw wood of Tlhros Vidar to get a great wand, a magic wand, uh, almost certainly. I got a magic wand, at gat gambantain. 33. Reither erther uden, reither erther osabrager, thick skalt froer fiosk, in fure nilla mer, in thu fingit hever, gamban revigoda. Odin is mad at you. Odin er reither there. Thor, which also is the name of Thor, is mad at you. Er reither there. Freuer shall hate you. Freuer skal fjosk thick. You extra bad girl in Firanilla Mar. But you have gotten, and thu hever fenget, the great wrath, uh, perhaps some sense of like almost magical wrath, gambanrevi, of the gods, Goda. Huiri jotnar, huiri thrim thorsar, sinir sutunga. Sjolver oslidar, hve ek fyrir byð, hve ek fyrir bana, mana gleum mani, mana nyt mani. Hear, Jotnar, hear, Hrim Thursar, so we have a more positive word for the anti-gods and, and the most negative word for them. Sons of Sutinger, the Asir people themselves, oslidar, sjolver. How I forbid, hve ek fyrir byð, how I curse the girl, I, I for okay, I forbid her ek fir bana, the girl mani. Remember one n, the joy of men glau mana. So two n, so it means men or or just people in general. The use of men nit mana. 
so I forbid her joy from men and, and, and use from men. Hreem Grimnir, this sounds like a pretty bad guy. He's got that Hreem in his name, and then it's like he's like the frost masked one. Is the name of a Thors who shall have you, er skull have a thick below the corpse gates, Fyr Nedan Nogrindr, so somewhere in the world, realm of the dead. Thar ther vilmegr o vida rotum geta hlandgevi, udri drukju fothu aldregi, mar at thinumunum, mar at minumunum. So despicable men, vilmegr, this is also used in Hovmal stanza 134, by the way, rare word, but I noticed that from, from Hovmal. Uh, despicable men may give you, gevi, on a tree's roots, o vida rotum, goat's urine, geta hland. You never get, and this is a command, never get, right? Like he's telling her um, straight up, you never get a better drink, uthri triku, girl, for the sake of your desires, athenomunum, girl, at the sake of my desire. So like, even if I want, once I've set this in motion, you're going to be drinking goat piss for the rest of your life. Thurs ristek ther ok thriol stavi, ergi ok uthi ok othola, so ek thata vrist, sem ek thata orest, ef gurask darvar thes. I carve for you ek rist ther a thurs. Now this is the name of the thorn rune in the younger Futhark. He could also be saying, uh, outside of a runic context, I'm carving some kind of curse well, it's so runes, but I'm carving a curse to, to bring this Thors, this Reem Grimnir guy who's going to feed you goat piss and, and all uh, onto you. And three staves. It could be, again, three staves of runic cursing or something. Ergi, which is sexual uh, shame. Uthi, which is madness. That's actually cognate. It's from the same root as Odin's name. And unendurableness, Othola. So I'm cursing you with these three things. Sexual shame madness, and just unendurable pain, probably. I carve so, which I carve, se mek thato raised, if need for it happens. Or I, I carve it off, ek, okay, ek rist that av, I will carve it off, like I will I will remove these runes cursing you, which I carved, se mek thato raised, which I carved on it, or whatever he carved it, maybe this magic wand that he grabbed, if needs for it happen, if tharvar thes geras. So here's all the stuff that's going to happen to you. Maybe it won't. Let's see what you say. And in 37, she gives in. She says, Hail verthu nu heldersvein, octak vid hrim kolki fulum forns miadar. Tho have the ekthat athlat at nindak aldregi una vaningyavel. Boy, be hail rather now. So basically, welcome instead and receive the glass full of old mead, fullum forns me other. Though I had thought, though ek have the atlat, that I would never, thought at mindak aldregi, love the one of the Vanir well. 38, he says, Urin di min vilek ol vita, odr ek rida heim hevam. Ner thu o thingi mut inum froska nena nyarar suni. I want to know, ek vil vita, all my errands, all mean urindi, before I ride home from here, all that ek rida heim hevan. So I, presumably I want to know they're all complete. When, now, will you, Munthu, uh, submit to the strong son of Njord, of Njord nena froska sini Njarder, at a meeting, or thingy? So when, you know, when are you going to consummate this? 39, she says, Bari hetir ervit badi vitum lundor loganfara, and eft nater niu tar mun yardar suni gerder una gamat. It's called Bari, which we both know, ervit badi vitum, a peaceful grove, loganfara, lunder. And after nine nights, and eft niu nater, there will gerder, tar mun gerder, grant. Her joy, Unagamans, this often uses a code for sex, to the son of Njordr. Now we have prose. Thor reith skirnir heim, froir stoth uti o kvadihan o kspurdi tivinda. Then Skirnir rode home. Thor stood outside and greeted him and asked news. Sansa 40, Froir speaking. Segthu mer that Skirnir. 
oder thu verper sodle av mar och thu stiger feti framar, quat thu ornadir iotun hema, dins eda mins munar. Say it to me, Sigvimir thought, Skirner, before you throw the saddle off the horse, oder thu verper sodle av mar, and you step a foot forward, och thu stiger feti framar. What you managed, what thu ornadir, in the realms of Jotnar, Jotunheima, uh, in terms of your or my desire, Thins at the means Munar. Skinner responds, 41, Bari hetir ervit bolder vitum lunder loganfara, in eft matter niu thar mun yardar suni gerder una gamans. So the exact same thing um, she said to him, just changing the word both from neuter, because it was a woman talking to a man, to masculine, because it's a man talking to a man. So Bari is called which we both know, a peaceful grove, and after nine nights, Gerther will grant her joy, quote-unquote, unquote, to the son of Njord. Freud responds in 42, the last stanza of the poem, Long er not langar rut fer, hue um throyak thrior, oft mer monadar minni thoti, en sio holv hynot. A night is long, not er long, two are long, tveru langar, how I endure, and this is subjunctive, so how could I endure, hue throyak, three, thror. Often a month, oft monother, seemed smaller, thoti mini, to me, mer, than this half wedding night, and sio holv hinod. So she says, wait for me nine nights, and he complains, three nights. The presumption here has typically been that the hinod, this wedding night, what that means is a three-night period in which you're expected to wait minimum between a proposal being accepted and consummating the marriage. So it's, it seems like probably what he's doing is he's expecting to wait that he note, that three-night period, and he's devastated because he's, you know, a psychopathic teenager, I guess, that he's got to wait three times that. He's got to wait nine nights. Well, Patreon, thank you so much for your support. I made this video all for you. <laughs> absolutely true uh because who else would sit through a 50 minute video uh but i wanted you to have the whole thing at once because uh, a few of you have asked for force units specifically hope that's useful you know you you interpret all this to me what it means people see allegories in this i'm not an allegory guy i think it's a story about how freuer gets his wife who is lower status than he is right being one of the vanir deities living among the, the Asir gods uh the vanir all take brides who are lower status right and Yorther has his wife uh, Skadi, who's also from the Yotnar. You know, I'm, I'm not an allegory guy. So make, you, you folks talk among yourselves about the allegories. But that's what the Old Norse says, as near as I can tell. For now, from beautiful Colorado, the chickadees and nuthatches and this mountain lion that's supposed to be around here. And I, we're all wishing you all the best.